this is a Shackleton banjo and I imagine you have one just like it and in this little short lesson I'm going to talk a little bit about the banjo itself and what makes it special and, and how it works um, and then get started on learning to play some things. Now the instrument is really simple it's a tambourine on a stick there's nothing more to say about what there is. Um, it's made up of the two primary parts, the tambourine and the stick. Um, up the top here we have a peg head, uh, we have machine heads on here for tuning. Uh, the strings come off the tuners and go across the nut. They run down the fretboard, it's the fifth string tuning peg there. They run down the fretboard, past all these frets, until they reach the bridge. Then they go over the bridge and they land on the tailpiece where they're, they're secured. Now, the bridge isn't glued on or anything like that, it just sits there, it's held there by the tension of the strings. And it's held on the head, which is this very thin um, mylar usually, uh, sometimes goat skin, but mylar, um, drum head basically. Now, the drum head is held onto the pot uh, using this tension hoop here and the tension hoop is held down onto the head uh, using tension brackets here. Um, some banjos also contain inside a tone ring uh, which just helps to project the tone a bit. Uh, the Shackleton is fairly special in as much as its tone ring is effectively a beveled edge on the inside of the pot, um, giving it a very natural sound and not quite as metallic as, as many other banjos. Now, the Shackleton is an open back banjo. You can see here, there's nothing going on in there. There's a truss road down the middle and there's just this big space. Um, some banjos, usually for, for playing bluegrass, um, have a resonator across the back, which basically just reflects the sound forward and gives it about 20% more volume. Um, can make it a bit overly bright, which is good when you're playing with, um, you know, a bluegrass band. Um, what I'm going to be doing primarily is talking about old time frailing. Uh, style, um, but more on that later. So when you strike a string, the string vibrates and that vibration is carried down through the bridge onto the head which makes the head vibrate. Now some of these sound vibrations travel through the head, reflect off your stomach and the well, mind is getting somewhat prodigious and then back up through the head again causing more vibration which projects it forward. Um, in addition to this, the head vibrating also travels back up through the bridge and vibrates the other strings that you're not playing. So harmonically, it's a really rich instrument. There's a lot going on there. Um, in fact, there's probably a PhD paper somewhere on the acoustics of a banjo. Um, as someone who has tried to record it quite a lot, actually getting a good recording is horrifically difficult, um, simply because there is just so much going on with the sound of the instrument. Uh, the other two things you'll need as well as your shackle, is a nice seat with no arms because you don't want arms getting in the way of your arms as it were because that would be too many arms you can't play a banjo with four arms it just doesn't work and on top of that a strap now what I usually do with a strap is put one end on the tension brackets just up from the, the tailpiece and the other end on the tension bracket just below the heel which is this part at the bottom of the neck. And what that does is that holds your banjo in about the right position. You want it about there, like practically in your ear. Um, that gives your, your left hand free movement um, without actually having to support the weight of the banjo. It will set up on its own. And that way you can just forget about actually how to hold the instrument because it will effectively hold itself. Um, if you don't have a, a nice fancy shackles and branded strap like I have, um, you can use a piece of string one of my gourd banjos has uh, just a piece of string holding it over and that works in a pinch. Um, main thing is though that you want your learning experience to be as comfortable and as simple as, as possible and you know you've spent a lot on an instrument you may as well spend a bit on a, a decent strap as well. It takes some of the pain out of it. Now that's the kind of the instrument and the mechanics of where you're sitting. Um, there is one other thing I'm going to say which isn't strictly related to actually playing it and that is the dreaded fingernail question. What do you do with it? Because in the frailing old time style 
is a down picking style, so you're repeatedly striking downwards against a steel string with your fingernail. And this is not kind to your fingernail, and your fingernail will thin and it'll eventually break and it'll grow back again and then it'll break again it'll grow back again. Um, a lot of people learning the banjo for the first time um, will spend a lot of time agonising over oh god what do I do about my fingernails, how do I protect them, how do I um, avoid having two days of my life where I'm not making a, a perfect sound. And there are various remedies like various types of finger picks that you can mangle and stick on and people glue ping pong balls onto their fingernail. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, my answer to the question is it doesn't matter, don't worry about it in the slightest. In the grand scheme of things no one is going to lose any sleep over you not having a perfect fingernail. Sometimes you'll have a great fingernail and it'll sound great and other times your fingernail will be clipped too short and it will cluck. That didn't work, I don't have one that's too short. It'll sound a little bit clucky and a little bit damp and it really really doesn't matter. Um, most of the time your fingernail will be fine so don't worry about the times when it's not. It's not worth it. Um, so without further ado, let's talk a little bit about this wonderful instrument and where it came from. Not this specific one, but the banjo generally. Um, it's kind of clouded in a little bit of mystery and there's a lot of folklore about it and there's a lot of very, very heated debate amongst people who should know better. Um, effectively, the, the banjo came from Africa with the slaves. Um, and while not identical, probably looked a little bit like this. Um, this is a gourd banjo. Um, it's basically mechanically very similar to the, the shackle. And it's a pot, the head, some strings and a neck. Um, and it plays very much the same way. Um, it was used on uh, plantations to play um, folk music and songs, as you would expect. Um, at some point and in some place someone decided it would be interesting to add a fifth string. Um, being a Scot, I'm going to claim Scottishness for that and our love of drones. Um, there are some people who, who believe that the uh, runaway and freed slaves who travelled north through the Appalachians um, and settled with the uh, Scots Irish settlers um, took a banjo with them. Um, hence a lot of mountain music has very Celtic roots to it. Um, and it's possible that that's where a fifth string was added. Who knows? Uh, at the time, these would have been largely either gourd banjos or, or open back banjos. Then at some point, someone uh, wearing a, a cowboy hat and a, a sparkly suit decided it'd be a good idea to add a resonator to the back of it. Um, and many, many picking styles have, have developed on the back of that. So the thing started out very, very simple and spread in all directions. There are people who play like I do. Just a, a standard folk style strummy frailing movement. Um, other people play the plectrum, peoples. Um, others put massive steel claws on their fingers and, and play like you know, you've you've seen deliverance, you know dueling banjos. That's generally known as Scrug style, um, after a gentleman called Earl Scruggs, who is a phenomenal banjo player. Um, but you wouldn't want to listen to just the banjo part in its own. It's great in the band, but it's uh, it's terrifying hellish cacophony. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting political, I should stop talking about Scrugsdale. Um, so th there are many more or less intricate methods of playing the banjo. I tend to keep it very, very simple and take a brute force and ignorance approach. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you. And there's a good reason for that. Um, because uh, frailing style, it's about the only musician, stringed instrument musicianship style I can think of which allows you to play solo and backup at the same time. Um, as, a, as an example, um, if you were to play, uh, he says, thinking a, a fairly simple song. Um, like that. You can also do... So you can do both a melody 
and the rhythm at the same time. It makes it really flexible. You can play on your own without sounding horrible and you can also play in a band um, without sounding horrible once you get over the whole, oh god it's a banjo effect, that is. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to talk about what I was doing there. Now, frailing is a down picking technique, um, which is quite unusual. Um, most people think of stringed instruments being up picked, which is you're plucking with the soft part of your finger. But with frailing, you're using one finger only. I use my middle finger, you can use your index. Index tends to be louder, um, a little bit too loud sometimes. Um, I tend to go with the middle finger because. I don't know, probably just because I learned it that way, but it has a slightly softer sound. And the softer sound of the middle finger um, combined with the kind of the sweetness, natural sweetness of the Shackleton is, is a good combination. And uh, there's going to be no complex musical notation involved here. I'm still debating whether or not I'm even going to go into tablature. Certainly not this lesson, maybe next one. Um, because this is an instrument that lends itself to just taking the music that's in you and putting it out through the instrument without having to um, learn to read notation or learn complex terminology. Um, about the only thing you need to be able to do in order to play this is count. Um, and you only really need to be able to count as, as high as four. You know, If you can get to four, you're fine. So we're going to be working in quarter note um, beats to start with, quarter notes and eighth notes. And that sounds scary, but it's not. The whole frailing style is built around one simple pattern, and that's this. Now all I'm doing here is, I'm striking down on the top string. Then I bring my finger back up and striking down on all the strings, or as many as I can reach, doesn't matter. And the force of that strum is pushing my thumb down on the fifth string, and then I'm just letting that pop off. Now, a lot of people worry about this hand technique. Um, they think, how can you be playing so many notes doing that? It works, honest. Now, what I'm doing here is, if I can lift up, I'm lying my thumb across the fifth string and it pretty much stays there most of the time and I'm pivoting my whole arm it's not just the wrist, it's the whole arm's twisting I've got this finger slightly projecting and I'm just going to strike down like a hammer hence claw hammer, I'm making a claw and I'm hammering with it When I bring my hand up, the claw's still remaining in the exact same place, he says, rotating. All I'm doing is I'm closing this bit of webbing in between my thumb and my fingers. You see, my thumb is still firmly anchored to the fifth string. And then when I pop my thumb off the fifth string, it's almost a circular motion. And putting it all together, you've got one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Very simple. Does that bear any relationship to what I was doing before? The same pattern. Exactly the same. Very simple pattern, and it's that strum in the middle that gives it the drive. As a further example of that, when you leave it out, It's a 
pretty impressive sound for just one instrument playing on its own. So, that's our basic technique. We're just going to strike down, strum, ping, ping, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Now, what I haven't talked about is tuning. So let's rewind a bit, and I'll talk about tuning. Pretend I didn't do that last bit, and then once I've done the tuning, you can pretend I did again, and that's all good. You'll notice, when I've been doing this, I've not done anything with this hand at all. I've not spoken about where to put it or what to do with it or anything like that. That's because the banjo is tuned to an open chord. You get it for free. This is tuned in G, which is G, D, G, B, D. So you pick it up out of the box, strum it, and it already sounds like it's playing a chord. And that's a great thing. Um, in order to tune it, um, there are various methods of doing this. Um, any smartphone you mentioned will have a tuning device which just records through the phone's microphone and gives you a little meter to see when it's in tune or not. Um, you can get little clip-on ones which uh, detect the vibrations through the neck and tell you when it's in tune or not. Unless you're playing with other musicians you can tune it to anything you like. All you need to do is get this note sounding. That's your fourth string. Counted one, two, three, four, five. So now if you put your finger on the fifth fret up here. Ooh, that's slightly edge in. The fourth string and the third string open should sound the same. And then if you put your finger on the fourth fret of the third string. third string and the second string open should sound the same. And then if you put your finger on the third fret of the second string, the second string and the first string open should sound the same. And then fifth string, uh, the first string at uh, the fifth fret should be the same as your fifth string. So that's five, four, three, zero. <laughs> five, four, three, five gives you your tuning. Um, and that gives you a nice open G. Now, we won't go very far just hitting the wrong string. Although you could probably accompany most rave music doing that. So, what we need to be able to do is hit other strings as well. This is a bit that takes the practice. Um, the longest part of your learning journey, and it probably won't be too long, is just going to be learning how to accurately hit all strings with your down pick. Now this is an easy thing to practice. You'll probably drive your, your spouse or your neighbours absolutely wild doing this. Um, I sit and do it in front of the TV. You can damp it. If you just rest one hand gently there, it doesn't make too much noise. But what you'd be doing, effectively, is just sitting with your G chord and first string, second string, third string, fourth string, first, second, third, fourth, first, second. Now this is, this is the, the bit of the, the voodoo um, that gets people kind of, the hell are you doing when you play, especially if you play fast, because your hand's scuttling up and down and to an external viewer you're just moving up and down, you're not picking out any individual strings. Um, and that's because the movement between the strings is actually very small. Now if you remember, we're doing our down pick and then we're closing that webbing to bring the hand up to do our strum. Now all we're doing to hit other strings is closing that webbing again. Now we're not flicking and we're not 
moving their wrist at all, it's all done through the arm. So we're going down, up, strum, ping, and then the next string. banjo, it's an open tuning, there are no wrong notes. Just hit it and if you hit the wrong one it doesn't matter. Um, you could try deliberately hitting it again the next time and see if you can. So the idea is, is to go down and then back up and then we can do alternate. So if we start off first string, second string, third string, fourth string, third string, second string, first string. banjo, join in. I'm going to run through this a few times. I'll shout out the strings as I'm doing it and, uh, and see how you do. Are you ready? One, two and three, four and 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 one. strum. Once you've got that down, everything else is actually really, really easy. There, there's really not much um, muscle learning to do. You need to learn some chord positions. You need to, to build up some calluses on your fingers because otherwise they'll get sore. But that's the hard bit. The hard bit is getting this strum to be second nature. Strike, strum, pull off. Strike, strum, pull off. Strike, strum, can try going faster. Once you've once you've got that down, you can try. You'll notice that that pull off on the fifth string is what giving the banjo its kind of its rippling sound. Um, it's very easy to forget to do that. Um, when you're first learning, there's a, a temptation to, instead of doing quarter note, eighth note, eighth note, there's a temptation to forget all about your thumb and do. Don't want to do that. You want to have a nice, clear pull off. It shouldn't be as loud as the rest of it, but don't worry about that at this stage, just... It should all be nice and clear. Don't be in a hurry to go fast, that can come later. What you want to focus on at this point is a really solid rhythm. basic frilling strum until you dream about it, until you're doing it in your sleep. You can sit and watch TV. Turn the TV up so that you know you drown out the banjo and you know you can suggest earplugs to, to anyone who happened to live with you. Um, permanent hearing loss is also good to, is a good assistance for living with a banjo player. Um, 
but once you've got that that technique down, you're you're well on the way. Uh, I am labouring this a little bit, maybe, um, but it's only to express the how fundamentally vital this is. So a quick recap. Imagine you're holding a credit card in your hand. Your oh, there you go. Your hand's going to stay in that position. That's your claw. You want your middle finger, or if you're using your index finger, your index finger. You want one of your fingers um, to be projecting. You're going to lie your thumb across the fifth string and strike down for your quarter note. Then you're going to close the weapon to bring your hand up and strum down and then pull off. And remember you're not flicking, it's a straight hammer straight down. down, second string, third string, fourth string, strings. Try and hit the ones you, you mean to hit. That's always good. Work it apart. One, two, three, four, three, two, one, or, you know, one, three, two, four. Keep at that, and next time we'll do something like We can learn that in one lesson, I promise. Um, thank you for watching. Hope this has been helpful and instructional, and hope to see you soon.